Let me take it to a place, Let me take it to a place far, away, far away where we can get away. We can get away. Feel the love, feel no pain. Yeah, yeah. Huh? She was like, Yo, my brother. Oh, what's Yo, it's top What's up? He wants to say something to the camera. Oh, go ahead. Let him know who you are, man. What you doing? Jonathan the Rat, reggae artist, upcoming reggae artist. Uh, yeah, we're So you gonna give us a taste? Uh, like Dennis Brown said, are you ready to stand up and fight the right revolution? Wipe away confusion, praise the lineage and divinity. Where did it all begin? Where can I start? Oh, I was born in Miami, Florida to uh, Haitian and Jamaican parents. I was raised in a multicultural household with my younger brother Joshua. Um, I was a really shy kid. Didn't talk much, didn't like to be in the mix. I'd be to myself most of the time. Um, or, you know, I'd be drawing, listening to music, watching music videos. I found that I had an interest in music at a very young age. See, by the age of, I'd say, 10, you know, I was listening to artists like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Bob Marley, um, Dennis Brown, um, many more. I usually, you know, discover new music on like MTV, BET, all those little music video um, TV shows, and I just kind of try to emulate what I see on the TV. I used to watch like the rappers rap. Um, on 106 in the park and I remember trying to like be in the mirror and you know trying to pretend that I was one of the rappers. <laughs> Later on I started playing, I picked up sports, soccer. Um, you know I thought that would be what I'd be doing you know with the rest of my life but music was always there and it was always calling me. No matter how much I, I really loved soccer I'd always that music would always be on my mind. You know, in the middle of the games, I'm thinking about, you know, songs before games. I have to listen to music. I have to, I have to listen to music. It was just always there, but I, I didn't know if that's what I really wanted to do because, again, I was really shy. Um, by the age of 12, I discovered GarageBand on my father's laptop. And once I discovered that program, well, you know, I started recording little freestyles over um, hip hop beats um, that were built in to GarageBand. I started um, writing my own lyrics, but I never show anybody. I'd always shy away when people would see, would catch me writing, and they'd ask me to show it to them. I'd always, you know, tell them it was nothing. Um, the first song I ever wrote was a song called Revolution in My View. Revolution, I advertise. Come on, children, get up and rise. Revolution. Revolution in my eyes. Revolution, I advertise. Come on, children, get up and rise. Revolution. Song really personal to me and What made me write a song like that was during those times I was kind of, I guess, struggling with identifying myself and finding myself. And, you know, what helped me, it will help guide me or put me on the path, the right path, was me discovering the Rastafari movement and reggae music. You ask I, who is Rastafari? Rastafara is colorless, north, south, east, west, purging away your colonial mess. Reggae music um, definitely put me in a state of mind that I needed because I was hanging around the wrong crowd, um, you know, doing things to be cool. And while I was doing these things, I always felt like I didn't fit in, you know, like that it wasn't something that I was supposed to be doing. 
you know, I'd always question myself after I'd do certain things, and I, I, deep inside I knew it wasn't right, but, you know, I just wanted to be cool, like we all do. But I'm glad that uh, reggae found me, you know, and molded me into the person I am today, spiritually, mentally. Um, my favorite reggae artist, Dennis Brown. Whoa, his voice is just, it's out of this world. I found it to be amazing. I could, I could still to this day, I, I still don't understand how someone can sing like that. And growing up, I always wanted to sing just like him. <laughs> I used to practice and practice in the shower, um, you know, when nobody was home, I just sing, sing. You know, Bob Marley too, Garnet Silk, Yellow Man, um, Nicodemus, uh, all of them, all the people that came before me, that's the music that really inspires me, that really has emotion, it has feeling, it has substance, it has something behind it. You know, some, whether it's spiritual, uh, it's uplifting music, and I think the world is kind of missing that today, or, you know, it's here, but it's just not getting its proper shine. Unfortunately, mainstream music is a bunch of negative music. Although I like some of it, but there's no balance. What you reap is what you sow. Don't ask me, that's just how it goes, girl. Do what you would so. I'm telling you, it will make you whole. Girl, don't you go that way. Girl, don't you go astray. The world is waiting on you. Here to guide you and show you the way. Stand strong with you till the end of your days. Always here for you. Always be there for you till the end of your days, the end of your day. Round and round she goes, she don't got no place to call her home. Round and round she goes, girl, what you reap is what you sow. And that's what I hope to do with my music and my brand, The Roots Evolution, is kind of bring back that music of substance with the balance of, you know, the negative. Because we're human at the end of the day. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's the same. Let me take you to a place all the road. We keep the money. Feel the love and no pain. Let me take you to a far away. Where we keep the money. I remember my first big show, 2014, at the Hollywood Arts Park um, Festival called Colors of the Caribbean. A pretty huge lineup and um, the biggest stage that I had ever seen at that time. Luckily, my uncle was working on that show and he was able to get me in. And I was determined, you know, I wasn't gonna let him down. You know, I ran so fast from backstage to center stage and poured my soul out. <laughs> And the fans 
responded back in a you know a very positive way and it, it made me feel good. It made me feel really good. There was no stopping me at that point. I was recording every single day. At least five to seven songs a day. You know, I was never in class. I know where my mom sees this is gonna get mad. <laughs> I used to skip school, you know, just to go to my friend's house to write music, record songs. That was the only thing on my mind. I knew music was what I wanted to do. And I was gonna do anything that I possibly could to make that dream come true. You know, whether it be not going to school at all, you know, my family wasn't very happy about that. But, you know, it just, it just wasn't for me. Music was my calling and I had, I knew deep inside my heart that I had to devote my 100% to my craft. I felt like if I were to be doing anything else, you know, I'd be wasting time, I'd be wasting my talent. I don't really like recording, to be honest with you. I hate being in the studio now, especially. My favorite thing, which has always been my favorite thing, is performing. Uh, when I watch people like um, James Brown, um, Stevie Wonder, Sammy Davis Jr., Michael Jackson, like, that kind of sparked that, um, that in me. Just, showmanship, entertainment. You know, I, I'm a big uh, movie fan, and I kind of treat my craft the same way. You know, I want people to experience my music, my brand, kind of like, you know, the same way you experience a movie. It's just entertaining, it's theater. And, you know, what better way to do that than performing? And with performing, you reach, you touch the audience in, uh, completely different way than when recording. It's a completely different art, completely different feeling, and it's just, it's something we can, you know, it's just unbeatable to really connect with the people face to face that are listening to your records. It's, it's insane, you know? And I forever love that. I'm a showman. Every opportunity I had to perform, I took it. Uh, in the middle of lunch, school, um, plays, um, you know, like little um, little performances for girls at after school. <laughs> um, I was performing all the time, constantly. I had to work and be the best at what I did. Evil, we may be wrong, but we are free. No man controls our destiny. No man controls our destiny. No way, no way, even. Hey, trials and tribulations may come your way, but we'll keep our minds strong till the end of our day. Till the end of our day.
So I actually ended up dropping out of school. Um, dropping out of high school. My senior year, um, my family wasn't very happy with my decision. <laughs> For, uh, I'd say like a year, you know, everyone was quarreling with me about, you know, going back to school and at least getting my GED. But I, at that time, I really wasn't trying to hear that. I wanted to focus on my craft. But, you know, eventually got to the point where I, you know, I, I don't like to see my mother sad. So I went back and got my GED just to, you know, make her happy and then for myself as well. You know, I after that, I ended up applying for a school called Full Sail University in Orlando for uh, digital cinematography. I got in. Um, it was a really great school. I learned a lot about, a lot more about my art. I learned about, you know, movies, of course, and cinema, but also how to make my shows better, and my music better, and my brand better. You know, so I, I don't regret that at all. Unfortunately, though, because of lack of funds, I had to um, stop doing that as well, you know. But what I gained from that experience is priceless, you know, and I don't let, you know, one obstacle stop me. You know, you gotta just keep pushing through, move forward, find the loopholes, and just keep, you know, moving forward. So, I was down on money, you know, didn't know what else to do. I was stuck, didn't think my career was going anywhere. So I eventually met Nasty. He's a concert promoter. And he pretty much took me up and put me on game and showed me, you know, how I can make money with my craft. So he would put me on his shows, you know, and have me sell tickets to, you know, my fans, my family. And I'd be performing every every weekend from like at nine o'clock till three in the morning every Saturday. Um, and it got to the point where he'd actually give the show to me and have me run it. So I would go out and book other artists and you know, give them a platform just like Nasty gave me a platform. You know, and man. I think that's, that's, that's what we need because, you know, there's so much talent out here, so much talent, but what's missing is, is, is the platform. Nobody's being given the opportunity, so I thought to myself, you know, now that I'm put in this position, why not help those who have a voice but don't have the platform to voice their opinions, you know? And I kind of basically found my little niche doing that.
and just move. I want to see you move. Let me see you move. greatest thing to ever happen to me to this day in my career a trip to London UK um, never thought in my wildest dreams that you know it would actually happen this fast but There was a time where I just, you know, I was so frustrated with the fact that uh, a lot of the companies that I reached out to, a lot of the bigger people that I had met and, you know, linked up with, they weren't giving me the time of day that I thought that, you know, I deserved. You know, and I didn't understand why nobody could see the good in me. I always asked, well, why am I not good enough, you know? So I took initiative and I started to email a whole bunch of venues um, in London. I don't know why. And I was asking them, they were telling them that I was planning a trip, you know, a few months later and I would love to, you know, perform out there. And I must have sent like 200 emails, you know, or many, many venues didn't even respond back to me. You know, but there were some that did, and with that, we we started a small tour, the Magic Tour, for my um, debut album, Magic. And I got to go, and that trip was incredible. I mean, it's, it's, it was so it's so different. The people, the vibe. Um, they really appreciate the music out there. You know, I had, um, after my first performance, I remember one lady had came up to me and she told me that she heard one of my songs, but she didn't know who sang it. I was some kid who came up to me off the street saying that he knew me. Um, you know, and uh, that was incredible. That was the first time that I had ever seen anything like that, I experienced anything like that, and man, that made me want it even more. That made me want to go even harder, you know. Made me want to become the greatest entertainer in the world. I saw a new fight, a new vision for myself, you know. And when I say that, I don't mean it in like a cocky way. When I say that, I mean, I want to be the be best version of me. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, there's nobody who's better than anyone. You know, we're all equal, we're all human, we all have different talents. You know, that we just have to strive to be the best us, and we have to love ourselves. And that's what I mean when I say it. I just want to be the best me. I just want to do what I was put on this earth to do, you know? Complete my mission. And that will forever be the goal. Give from heaven's above. It's you I've been dreaming of. I knew I had something burning inside of me that needed to get out, but I just didn't know how to get it out. But once I found music, I could get that voice out. In my music, I never tried to be something that I was not. You know, I never wanted to make it seem like I was some saint or some angel. You know, that's why 
you know, in my albums now, you know, there's a mix of, you know, the positive songs, the, you know, pro, black pro people songs, and a mix of, you know, the party songs, the dance songs, all that, because, again, I'm human at the end of the day. Humans go through different emotions, and if you don't, um, you know, I'm concerned about you, and you, you know, I don't want to be listening to you because, you know, that's not right. In life, it's just a balance, you know. You know, there's people out here that walk around like gods and, you know, try to point the finger and try to break, bring other people down. And it's like, no, we can't do that, man. We're here to uplift each other, you know. No one's perfect. Just be you. And that's what I strive to do with my music. You know, I don't, I don't care about perfection. I just care about the music. I show you my raw self in my music. You know, that's why I even shy away from like effects and those type of things, you know. I just give it to you, all, all my insecurities, everything, there. Take it how you want to. You know, you either hate it or you love it, you know. If you like it, thank you. <clears throat> if you hate it, you know, just keep it moving. What keeps me going is the people my music touches. You know, from when I released my first song, Revolution, in my view, I used to get um, you know, messages from people who didn't even live it where I live, from people all over the world you know, say things like how they love my music, how, you know, when they listen to my music and it changed their mood for the day or it bring them up, you know, from being sad or, you know, little, it's the little things like that that really makes me know and makes me feel that I have a purpose, you know, and I have a duty on this earth to continue to, you know, help people. Music is me. Music is my way of expressing myself. Music is my passion. It's my voice. And I hope to be doing it for as long as I live. For as long as you let me. Been down on my luck, but I get up, push up on them, but I had enough. Dance in the sunlight, raving the moonlight. Been down on my luck, but I get up, push up on my luck, but I had enough. Dance in the sunlight, yeah.